the story in Super Stardust HD is, well, to be honest, non-existent. You fly a spaceship, circling five different planets, and presumably defending it from asteroids and aliens. There's not much backstory really given. I mean, the most in-depth you really get is the names of the planets are given to you in arcade mode. And that's about it, really. The game kind of just goes, hey, here's some stuff to shoot. Go shoot it. The gameplay in this game is, as you'd imagine, the main focus. It has various modes, uh, namely Arcade, which is the main feature. You begin on the first planet and continue onwards. And once, you, once the planet is beaten, you continue on to the next planet, which is then unlocked. There's Planet Mode, which is a mode that allows you to take on one planet without continuing on to another one. There's Endless, and as it sounds, it's an endless swarm of random enemies and asteroid types. Survival, again, sounds like the title suggests. You have to survive for as long as you can against invisible little ball things whilst killing off enemies and generally not dying. There's Bomber, the challenge is using only bombs to get the highest score possible. And there's Time Attack, which is a mode in which you have to clear a planet as fast as you can. And you may ask, what is the point for playing these modes? Is there any incentives? High scores! That's the only real reason. Each mode has a high score, some even going into so, depth, so much depth that high scores for each individual planet in that mode. Now, I'm not a big fan of high scores, I must admit, but even I enjoyed racking up a, quite a big score and just seeing myself up on the leaderboard. Maybe one day I'll break the 90,000th mark. As you may be able to hear in the background, the sounds pretty damn cool. It suits the game, nothing too over the top, but it changes at each level, getting more and more intense until it culminates in the boss battle. It sounds pretty epic, and with an add-on pack you can even apply two different soundtracks, and you need breath or an orchestra. This is a touch that I really like about this game, because you don't get this too often, especially with arcade games like this. You sort of, you'd assume that you just get one track or whatever, but it's actually quite nice to just sort of have the variety. As you can no doubt see, Super Stardust HD looks pretty damn awesome. Even even better considering it's six years old. While it may look slightly old compared to newer games, it has something about it. Just it works incredibly well with what it's dealing with, and I'd argue these visuals are still pretty mind blowing today. The lifespan of the arcade mode is really dependent on your skill. If you're used to bullet hell games, and this is likely a step down, so you'll probably finish in, say, two hours, including some retries. As for me, I've still not beaten the last planet, as you've probably noticed in the video. And But it makes for a great half an hour session of gaming when you need to play something that don't really have too long to dip into anything bigger. The replay value of this game is what makes it great. Due to it working on a high score system, there's always a slight temptation to go back to the game mode you're tired of. Just see if you can make it higher on the leaderboard, and generally all of these modes are catered towards this, that you may play for, say, a minute and die, and then you may play for, sort of, 20 minutes and not die. Overall, Super Stardust HD is exactly what you expected to be. It's a flashy twin-stick shooter with pretty smooth gameplay and a cool mix between the arcade game Asteroids, something like Geometry Wars. It has one or two flaws, namely there is easy to become bored of the game after an hour or so. For all in all, it's a perfect example of a twin stick shooter should be. If you've not played it yet and the video appeals to you, then I really suggest that you go and buy it. It's not that expensive and you're guaranteed a good few hours from it, especially if you're fond of shooters. Anyway, overall, I would give this game a 9 out of 10. Almost perfect, although it doesn't keep my attention quite as much as I'd like it to have done. So, until next time, goodbye.